What's going on guys? It's your boy JFT coming at you with another video. Today we're looking at the PFL 2019 number one results video tonight. We had the PFL showcase the women's featherweight. Even though the announcers referred to it as lightweight more than once, I think it's I think it's featherweight from the website and from what everything I've read. This is a featherweight women's division, but maybe I'm completely wrong. And they also held the men's welterweight division, which is one to watch. And I'll have roster updates in the coming weeks for these divisions. And we started since every single fight on this card means something. I might as well go over absolutely all of them for you guys. Since they don't discriminate how everybody gets points dependent on the card. If you get a win, you get three points no matter where you get it. So let's start with the very, very first card. We have Roberta. I'm going to go quickly through the early prelims. We'll slow it down towards the end. But at the start, we had Roberta, Palm, Samad getting a decision unanimous win over Morielli. Moriel Charneski. Uh, Charneski falls to three and six on her career, well as Roberta moves up to five and one. It was a little bit of a mismatch. Um, however, Roberta only gets three points from the outing. She doesn't get the finish in a round, so she doesn't get the bonus points. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my PFL original video. We'll take a look at the standings at the end of this video. Next, we had the welterweight, the men's welterweight division. Chris Curtis picking up a win, and he gets the three points plus one because he's able to finish the fight at 417 of round number three. So round number one, he would have got three points. Round number two, he would have got two. But he finished the fight in the third round, so he gets a total of one point. He did this over Andre Fialo uh, in a nice fight that with ground and pound strikes KO slash TKO 14 minutes and 17 seconds in total ring time then we get to another this time a six point outing for Giaco Franca who defeats Gamzat Kira Magomedov in the first round four minutes and six seconds into the first round Giac Franca moves up to 20 and 5 whereas Gamzat moves down to 8-1 Gamzak came in undefeated, but lost that undefeated record here in this fight. In the first round, um, Franca goes on with six points in the tournament, which will probably etch himself in the next round. I think six points will be enough for anybody who wants to make the playoffs, but he'll probably want to have further advance in the seedings, and the only way to do that is to continue to get points and get another win, get himself up to nine, and if he can get another first round finish, he maxes out the points that you can get in a season with only two fights per fighter. Next, we had another women's featherweight fight, Bobby Joe Danzel, Canadian, improves to 5-0, and defeating Gina Fabian. Bobby Joe improves to 5-0. and um, this was another unanimous decision, so just three points were handed out. And we'll see how this affects the standings further on. And we'll see how late this one, Bobby, with the amount that she got on the judges' scorecards, that will also influence herself in the standings, but far less than you will with the point system. Next, Hendesin Ferreira defeats Boyan Velikovic. Velikovic falls to 16 and 9, whereas Ferreira improves to 14 and 2. Ferreira did make an appearance last year in their PFL tournament. He also climbs to 14 and 2. He gets a decision, so he's only going to get three points. So he's obviously going to be behind who we talked about early, the fellow Brazilian Franca. And then we see to open up the main card at 9 o'clock p.m., we get Sabdu Sadibo Sadibu C, who makes short work of David Michaud. In only 17 seconds, he was able to land a body kick that dropped his opponent. Round one, that averages six points for C, the Swedish kickboxer who's moving down from the middleweight division, has, I think, found a pretty good home in the welterweight division. If he can make this weight cut continuously, we'll see some improvements and some domination from this guy's game. And this one only took 17 seconds. Then we have UFC... Former UFC fighter Sarah Kaufman, who's one of the favorites in the women's featherweight tournament to win the million dollars, take on Morgan Fryer, a former U.S. military veteran, a uh, now women's fighter who wants to also capitalize and make it a big for the million dollars in her first main important appearance in MMA. However, Kaufman's experience led to a first round finish, an arm triangle choke via submission, so she gets six points. And she's also going to be first place because Kayla was unable to finish her opponent in the first round. So Sarah, as of the first fight for every woman in the division, is now first place with six points. Then we get to one that was a little weird, but it'll allow me to give you guys some information on the tournament. Zane Kamaka, 
actually missed weight for this performance, but he's fighting Ray Cooper the third, and there's some bad blood there. Kamaka is Cooper's cousin, and by entering the tournament, Cooper feels like it was disrespectful to the family. So Cooper said, I'm still going to fight this guy, but how it works is Kamaka cannot win any points. If he finishes the fight, even though it's continuing, he gets zero points. However, and Ray gets the three points as a walkover rule, I guess is what they called it, is what the announcers referred to it as. So Ray would have gotten three points either way. But with Kamaka's inexperience, Ray said, you know what, I'm going to beat this guy up because I don't, first off, I don't like him. Second off, I want to capitalize on the finish points. Third off, I want to get my fight and win bonus. So Ray Cooper gets in the octagon and he's able to finish him in the second round. So instead of only getting three points, he actually ends up with five points with the rear naked choke submission. Kamaka is a little new to MMA, and he was ranked the 12th best MMA fighter in the welterweight division by SureDog.com. Then, in the co-main event, we get to, in the co-main event and the main event, we get to see the defending champions win their fights. We get Magomed, Magomed Karamov, who gets a first-round finish, six points, guillotine choke, four minutes and 54 seconds into round number one over John Howard, who's at 27 and 14 and now 27 and 15. Magomed, Magomed Karamov defeated Ray Cooper, who we just talked about in last year's finals. And now we'll look to see if he can double that up, double up the million dollar grand prize and see where he can go from there. And then we get to the superstar of the PFL. She's been the superstar of the PFL. Kayla Harrison takes on Lar Larissa Pacheco, who was probably going to be her hardest competition since she started MMA. Kayla coming in undefeated at 3-0, and whereas Larissa's coming in at 11-2. and And Kayla Harrison, mind one back take from Larissa dominated the fight. Harrison dominated from bell to bell. She actually, for the first time, I think this is one of the first times I've ever seen this. Kayla had a 30 to 25 result in a three round fight. I've never seen a five round difference in a three round fight. So the judges gave Kayla two 10, eight rounds and it's the New York state athletic commission. And they like giving out 10, eights. I don't say I would disagree with it, but I probably would have just given Kayla every round one point, every round. Nonetheless, Kayla Harrison gets to top out the de de decision winners, so she edges out Bobby Joe, and she edges out Roberta, but she is behind um, UFC veteran Sarah Kaufman because Kaufman was able to get six points, and 2-1 to one ahead at six points to Kayla's three, so we'll see where this goes, and it looks like Sarah's going to probably get the best seating, whereas Kayla's going to have to settle for maybe number two, unless another woman could grab six, uh, three to six points, four to six points in her next fight, but... This was very, very interesting. I enjoyed this card. There were some finishes. There were a lot of finishes. There were some decisions. There's some incentive to get the finishes uh, because you're going to get more points that lead you better off in going into the playoffs, going off into the finals. You get better seating, so you're facing worse competition. So I'm very, very interested in seeing how fighters are going to go about that. Are they going to risk it and go for it all, or are they going to do exactly Cooper? I thought Cooper could, pro could have probably put it all on the line to try and finish the fight, but he decided I'm going to take it slowly, work Kamaka, broke Kamaka down, and then won the fight. And Ray Cooper didn't do that last year. Ray Cooper went out there and starched everybody last year, but then he lost to Magomed, Magomed Karamov. So it's very, very interesting, and I'm excited to watch more. And in week three, we get the light heavyweight and heavyweight, so I'm super excited for that. If you guys enjoyed and learned something about the PFL, remember to lay a like on the video and drop a comment on who you guys think was the best performance from PFL number one 2019 and who you guys think is going to win the women's featherweight or the men's welterweight, the early predictions. Thank you guys so much for watching. That'll do it for me. Remember to subscribe so we can watch this all together forever, but that'll do it. Peace out, guys.